let's uh let's get to the NFL. And Rob, um, the Bengals and the Chiefs obviously going to be a fantastic game this weekend. The Chiefs, man, I mean the Bengals. I'm sorry, they uh they got some talkers over there. Now they don't. I, I'm Joe Burrow. I give credit. Now he's obviously a very confident guy. He said, you know, go refund those tickets from the neutral site and all that stuff. But he he was very respectful of the Chiefs. He said that they still are the team to beat in the AFC in his eyes. Uh, and I think they are. We'll see what happens Sunday. But at this point, they are. They've had five, you know, one or been to five straight AFC championship games, all of them in Arrowhead. And... um with that type of track record, you can overlook, okay, they lost last year. They lose this year, then the Bengals become the team to beat in the AFC. But right now, I still say it's the Chiefs. But um, that's what Burrow said. But, Rob, the rest of their guys are talking some Mac. Eli Apple, now he talked more about Buffalo. But I don't know if you saw his Twitter rant. It was a multi-Twitter rant, tweet rant. It was hilarious uh, talking about the Bills and really going at, at Josh Allen and mostly Stephon Diggs. But, um, you know, Joe Mixon saying they were the big dogs of the AFC a few weeks ago and that nobody can bring beat them when they bring their A game and play on top of their game. And the Chiefs have taken notice. Here's Travis Kelsey in the New Heights podcast he does with his brother Jason. We are the loudest stadium in the world on record. 42, yeah. 142 decibels. Did you guys break the record this week? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe uh, we're going to have to break it this week because uh, a lot of Cincinnati Bengals fans are calling it Burrowhead instead of Burrowhead. Arrowhead. Whoa. Yeah. Uh, the that disrespect to Arrowhead they're, they're, continues. They're throwing, they're, throwing, they're throwing a lot of bullets and board material out there, Ron. Rob, here's the funny thing to me. The Bengals, more than anyone, should know uh, the power of, of bulletin board material, whether you believe in it or not, they seem to believe in it because they've used it to this point themselves. Right. I mean, not only did they make something out of nothing. I mean, the the NFL wasn't disrespecting them. They were just doing what they have to do logistically in case Buffalo would have won that game. And the Bengals turned it into a whole disrespectful thing. And I'm fine with it, but they used it as bulletin board material. Their coach, Zach Taylor, emphasized to his team how old Buffalo is 4-0 at home in the playoffs under Sean McDermott. Buffalo has the best home record in NFL playoff history. That's hard to believe, Rob, but it's true. All of that stuff he told to his team to get them hyped up for the game. And so I think they understand. They seem to think bulletin board material works just from their history. So it's interesting that they're going at the Bengals like this, Rob. Yeah, I I, I just, I'm one of those guys. I mean, going at the Chiefs, I'm sorry. I'm just one of those guys. I don't know how much it really plays in. I really don't. It's always better not to get people worked up about you and just go about your business and celebrate after you win the game. I think that's how I would go about it, you know what I mean? But these are young guys. They, they machismo. What do they call it? Macho machismo. Machismo. Thank you. And the macho, and and they're feeling great, and they're in their twenties, and they can do everything. Do you know what I mean? Like this is, and and the way people are with the Instagram and the social media and all the. But the, you don't see many other teams doing this. Yeah, I, I'm not killing them for it. Hey, you I, just got to back it up. I That's just all yeah, I'm I just don't. I, so if they win, then they I guess they feel like. They can keep doing it, right? Would you say that, or or should they still stop if they win? Well, you know what they, I mean. Like if they win, it'll be interesting. Would they do this with the NFC? I I don't know, because um, ultimately it's nice to be the king of the AFC, but that's not the goal, right? All that gets you is a, a Super Bowl loss if you're just the kings of the AFC. But I, here's what I'll say, right? Because a lot of people might feel like, you know, man, you talking like that, you talk that much, it might come back to bite you. But the Chiefs certainly aren't the team to say it's going to come back to bite them because they are as cocky as they come. And again, no issues with it. Just got to back it up. Last year, they talked about getting their swagger back. Oh, 
Chris Jones, after their first Super Bowl, Rob said they're going to win five Super Bowls. That, Tyreek right. Hill, not with them anymore, said seven. Not one, not two, but seven. Was it, who was the guy who said it wasn't going to be fair? Was was that what? That, that wasn't what? Yeah, that was a defensive back. I can't remember which remember one that, that oh, was. Oh, it's not going to yeah. be fair. No, no, no. That was the Browns, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, that was the Browns. That was the guy with the Browns. Right, right, right. But, um, and then, Rob, even like, look, and I love it, but the trick plays. You saw them the other day. They did what they call the snow globe, like ring around the rosy in their huddle or a spinning huddle. That's trash talk. That's completely disrespectful. That's some Harlem Globetrotter stuff, Rob. Mm. And again, I'm here for it, but don't get mad when somebody trash talks you. To me, it's like Muhammad Ali get mad if somebody trash talk him. He talk trash. So if somebody else does it, hey, it is what it is. So I look, the Bengals are talking. I'm with you. I, who knows, you know, if the bulletin board material works uh, or motivates people. Obviously, they should have as much motivation as they need. Sometimes, Rob, you could get out of your game if you get too worried about what somebody was saying, right? Yeah. It can yeah. get you, you know, trying to do too much. It, it was like... And, and Chris, we talked about this before, like the the Hamlin story with Buffalo. That's going to be their rally cry. You know, they're going right. to play for him. Remember we talked about it, and I was like, I remember Katrina, uh, the Saints lost. Everybody thought they were going to win the Super Bowl. Oh, they're going to play for the city and all that. Yeah, We talked about 9-11, and, and uh, the, the country's rooting for the Yankees to win. Arizona right. won the World Series in seven games. You know, like – those things, like, y- you got to go out and play. You can't get caught up right. in too much stuff that's outside of the realm of what you're doing and think because, you know, something's bad happened or good, Chris, or whatever in your city or your town that that means you're going to automatically win. No. The team that comes out and is prepared and, and plays the best is going to win, regardless of that. If, uh, if they can't protect or Mahomes is uh, – High ankle sprain, Chris, swells up in the first quarter and he can't move around and they keep getting to him. That's what's going to be the reason why right. they uh, th- that 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 uh, Cleve, um, Cincinnati won, not because of what they said. Right, right. Now, you know, if the Chiefs win after the game, you can, you know, you can throw some shade at the Bengals and, yeah, they were talking all that stuff. You know, and people will take that, to be like, oh, see, they motivated, right, you know, like even right. Burrow saying, you know, go, get, go get, better get the refunds or whatever. Like some people will run with that. Oh, they were motivated, but I, I agree. At the end of the day, you you have to go out and play. Let me ask you this because I'm leaning Bengals. I, I said earlier in the week I was going to pick them, but I'm I'm still deciding. Um, but I'm leaning them. But does it does it concern you? Because these are obviously two evenly matched teams. All three victories by the Bengals, Rob, by three points each. Um, Does it concern you? Like, when you have two evenly matched teams and you've beaten them three straight, man, it just seems like, man, are they really going to beat them a fourth straight time? You know what I mean? Like, Ah. we always hear it about beating a team three times in the season, but this would be four times in what about a year and a half right i mean that 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 i know what you mean is, the a, odds is, a, is a concern yeah i mean but you got to look at who's playing well mahomes is banged up i mean you know like if you look at all those things there's a reason why kansas city's a one point favorite chris and it's not that because normally you get three points right no no norm, under normal circumstances Just when you're the home team home. yeah right. for being home so there's there's a feel like, you know, like they're not what they normally are, and that's the reason why. If it was a, a straight up three points or whatever, I know what you're saying. Just the hot the 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 expect I mean the odds of beating somebody four straight times. Right, right. But but um and I don't know. I mean, you know there. Are, Teams that are, I'm not saying that, that the Bengals are any kind of, but dynasties have won where they keep winning, Chris, and you go, boy, at some point, weren't the Yankees going to lose a World Series when they won three in a row and four out of five? You know what I mean? Right, like, right. like you just, they won, they won three in a row. 
Right. They did. Right. So yeah. 